and welcome back to the Haunted Heart Podcast. The Haunted Heart Podcast, your favorite spooky show with your hosts, Kenny and Katie. We're doing a great job at introducing ourselves. We're on a streak, you might say, Uh if it was Snapchat like the kids use. I don't use Snapchat. I don't either. I don't like it. I don't either. I don't like it. I tried. We tried. We did try. We did for a little bit. Um, We're just too old, guys. We're just too (laughs) old. No, instead we just switch to TikTok. Or the oh, I'm still, that. yeah, I can't. I'm not on TikTok. I like to watch TikTok compilations on YouTube. Like, that's how old I am. Mm. You know, I feel like that says something. I'm not completely, like, disconnected from it, but I just like to watch the compilations on YouTube, which I think is a very specific, like, age bracket. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, I'm I'm really just there for, like, the Trisha Paytas drama that happens and, like, a lot oh god but, I, know, can't, I can't i kind of like trash i will tell you one thing though i have uh gotten into among us i've started playing that oh uh, you're you know i really i really admire your efforts to stay young it's actually really fun <laughs> is it i'm not gonna lie like is i'm it not a horror big gamer game? what is it so is it a horror game it's this game where you play and you would actually probably really like it i think really? so it's this game where you play these like little really cute astronaut people uh-huh. and they've got like their little suits and their little bubble like masks or whatever oh, yeah. Like Moon's whatever haunted? Call it. yeah and they don't have arms they just have two little tiny little legs and you play a different color each time and you can like customize them and wear like different hats and different things and then so they have several maps that you kind of go to and the point is is that you have like a group of up to 10 players and one person in that group is an imposter and the imposter's goal is to try to kill you or to kill everyone. Oh, so it's like werewolf. I guess. Like when we used to play werewolf. And you as the uh, crewmate have to do all of these tasks. And everyone has to finish their tasks. And if they finish their task, then the crew wins. So it's essentially the crew versus the imposter. Oh. And the imposter can go around and kill people. And he can like sabotage your tasks mm-hmm. and do all of these different things. And you can... Like you have meetings where you can call um, like emergency meetings and you can vote people off. And if you discover a dead body, like you kind of come together for an emergency meeting and then you can vote people off who you think is uh, what they say is suspicious or sus. And it's actually really cool. And it's is it like a computer game? It's an app that you play on your on your phone. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. It's like really it's really crazy because like sometimes you can just be there and then like you can be doing your task or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like someone just comes up and then they just fucking like literally like stab you in the back or like the little animations are that they'll, they'll rip your head off and question so, what, how though? Cause they don't have arms. Well, they, they, they like arms come out. Like it's really weird. Like, like in the tentacles. Yeah. Like some of them, like the imposter would have like, a lot of the times they're uh, drawn as like having tentacles or they'll mm. like, you know, bite your fucking head off. Or sometimes they'll like pull a gun out and just shoot you. It's, Interesting. It it's seems cool stressful. Game. It seems like downtown Philly. But it's great. I, when, I don't know that I'm there for that. It's great when you are the imposter. Oh. And you're okay. the one doing the killing. Yeah. Fabulous. Got it. All right. Worried about you. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. Well, thank you for that. That was our weekly game review. Yeah. With resident gamer guy, yeah. Kenny. Yeah. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Um, we don't have any patrons this week, uh, so <laughs> there's that. I'm a little, no, it's weird because we've had so many like, um, Patreon indications to do that. Like I, it's, I mean, I guess it's a, I guess it's a first world problem. Like yeah. I, I don't really know how to segue into the show without an invocation. Well, like, it's, I'm, I'm here and I'm ready to do the match. You are here that. and it's your episode. I don't, I, mean, I feel like I should light a match just to get things rolling. I mean, <laughs> Listen, we have lit candles for ourselves. We have. That's true. That is true. And I am just here. I'm just here. You're here for a story. I'm here for the story. It's your off week. It it's is your, my off week. You know, kick back. Is it really an off week? Mm. Is it? I'm, I think every week for us is an off week. <laughs> so true. But I'm just here to listen to a story. I'm here for you to tell me um, something that's probably going to keep me up at night. Yeah. Um, make me look over my shoulder as I'm walking down the street at night because, you know. That's kind of what you do. I'm just ready to be depressed. Okay. Well, you might get disappointed this week. then, Because <laughs> this week, it is a Katie episode, but we're here to have fun. There's a lot of stress going on in the world. There's a lot of, there's a lot of heaviness. Um, and we're, we're going to mostly keep it light 
today, and that's a pun, and you'll get it later. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do want to give a trigger warning up front because while this episode might be, you know, we're going to try to keep it light. We're going to try to keep it breezy, easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Um, but it may be a little triggering to certain individuals. So I want to give a trigger warning up top to all of our listeners who struggle with disordered eating or di- have been diagnosed with eating disorders. Um, today's topic does have to do with extreme food restriction. So if that's something that causes you distress, please consider skipping this one. We will not be offended. And if disordered eating is something that you're struggling with personally right now, I'll know that quarantine is affecting everybody you know, differently and it's thrown a lot of challenges our way. Um, I know it can be tough with everything that's going on, but do consider, if you do need help, consider contacting the National Eating Disorder Helpline at 1-800-931-2237. And you can also live chat with them online at nationaleatingdisorders.org if you are not a phone person, because plenty of people, including Kenny, are not. I hate a phone. I hate a phone. <laughs> yes. So take care of yourselves if this is you, and we will see you next time. But for everyone else, we're here. Let's get started. So this week, we are talking about breatharianism. A Do you what? know anything about breatharianism? I'm sorry, what? It is cult week, okay? Oh, it's a cult so this episode. is a cult. It's oh. been a while. It's been a while since we kicked into cult season. Um, I, 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 What was the last cult we covered? Was it Teal Swan? Teal Swan. Was she the last one? You did Teal Swan. Yeah, they love your cults. That's they 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 like when you do the cults. I love a good cult. I love a good cult. Um, it's you know it's always a good time. That was Teal. It's Swan. actually <laughs> rarely a good time. <laughs> I don't know. She's probably still practicing not blinking. I I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So I thought that it would be a good time to get into another cult. I didn't want to do like something super super heavy. This has its heavier moments. But for the most part, like I said, we're going to we're going to crack some jokes. We're going to keep it, keep it pushing and we're going to have a good time. So, yes. Yeah, so we are talking about breatharianism. Kenny, if you had to make up a definition on the fly for breatharianism, what would you say? I mean, to me, it just sounds like breathing an Arianism. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't like Nazi Arianism with a Y? There's no Y in there. An Arian Arianism. I wasn't thinking why I was think I don't know. I don't know. It's just such a weird word. I was like, what the fuck is this? It sounds like something that you'd find on the back of a pill bottle. It is. It's kind if of you were suffering from breatharianism, you know, <laughs> please consult your doctor. You should. You should consult your doctor. So breatharianism is kind of the cheeky name for the claimed ability or the group of people who claim to have the ability to live without consuming food and in some cases without consuming water. Uh uh-huh. Breatharians claim that food and sometimes water is not necessary for survival and that humans can be sustained solely by prana, which is the term for the vital life force in Hinduism. So that's a borrowed term. Okay. There's lots of those. Um, According to Ayurveda, the sunlight is one of the main sources of prana, and some practitioners of breatharianism believe that it's possible for a person to survive on sunlight alone. Huh. Just on sunlight. Just, just on sunlight. strictly on sunlight. Living on light. So like just nothing else. You can just get your nutrients and everything that you need from the sun. Like a plant. Like a beautiful tree. But plants tree. also need water. It's true. They do. <laughs> as as do most or, living things. Or else they 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 die. Mm-hmm. They dry up, mm-hmm. wilt, die, you know. I I would assume that that would be the case for someone who uh, just makes the choice to not drink water or put H2O in their body. Yeah. So it's important that we acknowledge up top that breatharianism has pretty much unilaterally been denounced and described as a deadly pseudoscience by scientists and medical professionals. Several adherents of the practice have died from starvation or dehydration. And it's an established fact that human beings require food and water to survive. So please do not try this at home, kids. Do not. Now that we've got the uh, disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about the origins of breatharianism, shall we? We love a good origin story. We love an origin story. Uh, So fasting has long been a spiritual practice, particularly in Eastern religions, but even in the Christian religion, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the Judean desert when he Mm -hmm. was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Yep. 
Um, fasting is something that I have personal experience with. I love a good fast. And it is a somewhat spiritual experience. I kind of got, have gotten into intermittent fasting like last year, maybe maybe the year before. But anyway, I got into intermittent fasting and kind of like looked at different fasting schedules. And there's anything from fasting from 8 p.m. to 12, like 8 p.m. one day to 12 p.m. the next day to more extended fasts, like 24 hour fast, 48 hour fast, um, 36 hour fast. The 36 hour fast is actually called a monk fast. And that's the one that I'm the biggest fan of. So it can sort of be this spiritual thing. It does sort of force you to, to turn inward and to kind of learn to trust yourself in new and different ways. Of course, anytime that you are thinking about starting a fasting regimen, you should definitely talk to your doctor because some people can fast for more extended periods of time and some people cannot. Um, But in every, pretty much every reliable doctor's opinion, nobody should be doing what's called a dry fast, which is where you abstain from food and liquids, including water. Mm. Not a good choice. No. So it's this sort of intersection of spiritualism and fasting that interests proponents of the breatharian movement, particularly as it's depicted in Hindu religious texts. Breatharians point to the allegorical accounts of saints and hermits practicing what would be called inedia in Latin, which just means fasting in Latin, as empirical evidence that breatharians or sustenance through light has been around for thousands of years. And there's lots of sort of uh, examples of this in, and I'm going to murder these titles and names. I'm very sorry. Um, In Valmiki's Ramayana, book three, canto six, there's an account of anchorites and holy men who flocked around Rama, um, who is a religious figure, a Hindu religious figure, when he came to this particular hermitage. And The quote is uh, that these this group included, among others, the quote, saints who live on rays, which moon and day star give and quote, those whose food is supplied by the wave of air, end quote. It sounds like those people on Instagram who are like getting their nutrients from the shining their fucking butthole into (laughs) the sun. Yeah. I mean, that might be so particularly like what we're talking about today is you don't necessarily have to have to use your your butthole to absorb the rays of the sun. But I mean, I guess you could (laughs) if you wanted to spice things up. I guess you could. I I, I remember seeing that and I'm like, hmm. Uh, hmm." Technically, I think they would fall under breatharian. Breatharian. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Um, and I would just be concerned about, you know, getting like skin Sunburn. cancer on my on my butthole. That's got to be got to be an awkward question to your for your doctor, because I'm sure that's not a typical place that one gets, you know, like a, a, a melanoma. It's not good. It's not good. So if anything should be doing? protected from from the sun, sunburns, it's your butthole. It's your, it's your asshole. <laughs> I mean, it's your butthole. I mean, I'm just saying you got to. You got to take care of it. It's not, it don't like the sun. I don't feel, I mean, I don't, don't feel like. It don't like the sun. I just, I'm just saying. I don't like the sun. I'm an asshole. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it can relate. Sound logic. Sound logic. <laughs> so, there's actually four different levels of breatharianism. Oh, levels. We have a hierarchy. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, of course we do. It's, it wouldn't okay. be cult week without a hierarchy. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, at least according to Ray Mayor, Master of Awakening on uh, YouTube. Uh, is he a breatharian? Aaron, he is. Breatharian he's then? a he's a practitioner and a teacher of breatharianism. Hmm. Ray and Mayor what was his Master name? Ray Mayor, Master of Awakening. Master of Awakening. Yeah. Why do all of these like cult leaders and like these people always have these like super cringy titles? Yeah, for the master of the uh, yeah. See, that's why you can trust us because we just tell you straight up we're trash. I mean, pretty much straightforward. That's what you want. That's what we've got. (laughs) I just don't master of awakening. Okay. Yeah, this guy has sixty three thousand subscribers on YouTube. What the fuck are we doing? Well, you know what? Well, you know what? I need. I'm gonna need him to awaken me. Please, (laughs) please awaken me. I'm ready to be woke. I mean, I'm I so there is like, mm, how do we say this? Um, save for the fact that he's a little that he is the master of awakening um, and he's he's really he's really down with the movement. And I'm really into mac and cheese. 
and so could probably not be down with the movement. I mean, he is cute. Like, like he's he's kind of hot. I, I mean, I know I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but okay. he is. Uh, I don't think I would mind uh, awakening to him, save for the fact that you know, I think morally is pretty questionable. I mean, I was going to say, like, this doesn't seem like it. They don't seem like it would work out. I, uh, I mean, no. I know you and I know yeah. that that you like me do enjoy food you like the you know the consumption of food is is a beautiful thing i mean we love our pasta we love our 10 piece nugget from mcdonald's every now and then Mm -hmm. like of course you know like have a healthy balanced balanced lifestyle you know diet like don't go to eat mcdonald's every day but you know, we do enjoy a, vi- a variety of foods. Yes. And that does include the occasional, you know, junk food, fast food treat, if yeah. you will. Yeah. But again, breatharianism, not necessarily just against fast food, just kind of all. But yeah. All just food. against food. Just I mean, food. I mean, I can look at a chicken nugget the same way that I can look at a nice apple. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't know that I could ever just abstain from that. Completely. Would, right. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but breatharians, you know, I guess it's important to acknowledge in, in all fairness, you know, they they do talk a lot about how um, it is very sustainable and the environment mm. would be better off and blah, 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 which is probably true. I mean, human beings well, are a cancer. I mean, humans um, would would die. Yeah, we, die. we are a cancer on the earth. But I don't know that the best way to address that is to just remove us from it. Like, I don't know that that. I mean, listen, at the end of the day. Earth is just like the human body. It's going to die. The sun is going to consume it at the end of the day. So, yeah, the serpent feasts on the on the I, roots of the tree of life. I know? mean, so it is what it is. Yeah. So anyway, Ray Mayor diving, moving away from our own spiritual <laughs> practitionership and into his. Um, so he's identified these four levels of breatharianism right. for us. Cool. So we're going to run through them. Um, level one are apparently not breatharians at all. (laughs) These people are vegetarians or vegans and are sort of becoming interested in the concept of breatharianism. How did I know that we were going to talk about vegans at some point? You know it it was coming. No shade to vegans, but I just, I knew this was coming. Level one is a vegan. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Got Mm -hmm. that. Uh, So they know, these people know that breatharianism exists, but they don't imagine that they are capable of reaching that level. Technically, this is where Kenny and I would fall into okay. level one breatharianism. So you don't necessarily have to be a vegetarian or vegan. You just have to be aware of breatharianism, apparently. It's very okay. dicey. Yeah. It's very dicey where these lines are drawn. Right. So level two, these are the people who are kind of on and off. Their integration is not complete, so to say. After their initiation, Ray claims it takes two to three months for most people to advance from level two to level three. Ray claims that intermittent fasters and dry fasters fall into the category of a level two breatharianism. They eat only occasionally and they eat only high vibration foods. Okay. What what aisle of Whole Foods does that... <laughs> Does that fall under? That's what I want to know. They might I'm be six, for, seven, and nine. I'm looking for, I'm walking down, I'm just like, hi, I'm looking for the high vibration aisle. Yeah. I think technically it would be produce. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> I So I know that like, it kind of, it's sort of, I I have read about this or I've like seen YouTube videos about it because you guys know me I and I love to look at things that make my eyes bleed. And from what I've gathered, like a high vibration food, like I think fruit is very high high vibration like the people who talk about the vibrational content of food i think are along the lines of like fruitarianism like it's real important to them but i i think mcdonald's by contrast would be like very low vibrational food i don't know i get plenty of vibrations when i open up that 10 piece nugget and i'm just saying i gen generally tend to look for my vibrations in other sources. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not really looking for food to give me much vibration. If your food is Like, that's vibrating. what Hitachi is for, right? <laughs> yeah. Hitachi, Miss Hitachi is for vibrations. Um, food is just, you know, to keep me alive. Right. Right? So, so that's level two, right? We're focusing on vibrations. We got these good vibrations. Yeah. So level three is where Ray claims that he falls, Master of Awakening. These people consume very little food or water from once 
consuming food once a day to once a week in the evening or once a day in the evening to like once a week. So somewhere in there. Uh, Ray claims that for his first full year, he drank two to three glasses of juice per day. And that was it. What what kind of juice? I don't Talking know. About like ocean spray. Like, I don't know. He, he just orange said fresh juice. juice. Sunny D, perhaps. I guess. Since we're getting that uh, all of the nutrition from the sun. Which honestly, like as somebody who has practiced, like I have fasted, the longest I ever fasted was seven days and it was for global hunger strike and it was last November um, before Thanksgiving. So that's the longest I've ever fasted. Generally, I like, like I said, I like the 36 hour time frame. But the thing about fasting is that like it, it is, it's like a muscle. The more you do it, the better you are at it. But one thing you don't want to do in the middle of the fast is consume any amount of sugar like whatsoever, because mm-hmm. that kicks your insulin response in, like from a medical standpoint, this kicks your insulin response in. And when your insulin spikes, you want food. Right. So uh, yep. what you don't want to do if you're trying to fast is consume a shitload of sugar. What you do want to do is consume like black coffee, green tea. Water is great for kind of helping you get through a fast. But not sugar. So I'm like, when he's like, oh, I had two to three glasses of juice per day and that was it. And I'm like, "Mm, one, as a fasting person, that's not going to help you, right? That would only make it harder. And two, I don't know that I'm buying it, Ray. I don't either. I'm like, sir, I I need need to see some receipts here. Like, Yeah. It's not like you have a glass of juice and then you're satiated and you're like, oh, no, this is fine. I can fast for longer. Like, it's more like you have a glass of juice that breaks your fucking medical fast because your insulin spikes. And then you need to consume every fucking thing inside. Yeah. Like, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. So I was very skeptical of that. But apparently that's what happened. According to the master. We'll see. Yeah. So on to level four. Right. We've left Ray behind. Ray's a humble level three. Is level four like you're dead? (laughs) Level four. These precious few people go without all food or water, living off of what they call prana solely. For every cell, Ray claims, there is an engine of light, and this is called the, quote, pranic engine. And level four breatharian cells have evolved to run off of only light, meaning they don't consume any water or food, nor do they urinate or have bowel movements. Ray says that for some breatharians who have reached level four, the journey was easy, and for others, it was quite arduous. He cites one breatharian whom he doesn't name, who apparently lost all of his teeth as part of his, quote, transformation and was without teeth for a number of months before he was able to consciously just grow them back. I don't I don't think that's how teeth work. Nightmare fuel. I don't think that's how teeth work. I don't I don't I don't understand. Number one, you're talking about how like these people don't use the bathroom. Okay, that's not how your body functions. Like even if you don't eat, your body is still consuming itself and there will still be waste regardless because of that. So it I don't understand that point. Number one, suspicious. Uh, Number two, I don't fucking believe it. I don't believe it. Hands down. There's a there's a Papa John's man coming there, you know, at some (laughs) point like. I want to come to these people's houses. I want to sit in the bush and I want to watch. I'm going to wait for that delivery driver, that Grubhub. Let me check that phone. You got a Grubhub app? (laughs) Funny that you would mention that because we're actually going to get into a couple of studies where these people were observed. Uh huh. Oh, so we're going to get into that. I want to hear that. Yeah. So, I mean, but I just think it's nightmare fuel of like, like imagining like somebody going through this quote unquote transformation into what? Into a fucking demon? Like into (laughs) when he consciously, like when he decided to grow his teeth back, did they fucking grow in sharp and jagged like razors? Like, was it that type of situation? Uh-huh. Was it a fucking Russian sleep experiment <laughs> moment? Fucking teeth grow back. Anyway, that's my, that's one of my favorite creepypastas, Russian sleep experiment. If you haven't read it, I mean, it's a classic, but if you haven't read it, check it out. It's, it's good. So, yeah. So apparently level four people lose all sexuality and gender identity. And their goal is to simply, quote, be one with the spirit. Prala Johnny, an Indian sadhu who claims to have lived without food and water since 1940, was cited as a level four breatharianism. Remember Prala Johnny's name because we're coming back to him. Oh, I'm going to remember. About a minute. Yeah. So those are our different levels of breatharianism that have been laid out to us by Ray Mayor, Master of Awakening, with 63,000 followers on YouTube. I'm not, I'm not bitter. I'm not. 
We're not. Not at all. Not one. Definitely not one. Not. We're not, not one bitter is here. Definitely. Not. <laughs> what would we be masters of? Uh, masters of trash masters <laughs> of most definitely not masters of sound editing i can tell you that definitely right not now. that master of none master oh, of i none. love it oh that's mysterious that's what that's what we need to repackage our youtube channel master <laughs> of none masters of disguise <laughs> great movie by the way excellent movie excellent movie all right, so we've got our we've got our basic tenets of breatharianism. We've got our different levels that we can progress through. A food pyramid, if you will. A, indeed. <laughs> and now we have our gurus, right? Because what is a movement without gurus, uh, without names? Without I have some names, names for you. Without their, you know, social media presence, we yeah. love it. Yeah, we love it. We love it. So, uh, Prala Johnny, right? This, this level four breatharianism. I told you we were going to come back to him, and here we are. He was this guy who claimed to have, he was an Indian sadhu, an Indian teacher, an Indian like spiritual leader, who claimed to have lived without food and water for more than 70 years. His claims were investigated by doctors at Sterling Hospital in uh, Ahmedabad uh, in 2003 and 2010. So at two separate times, right? The study concluded that Pralajani was able to survive under observation for two weeks without either food or water and had passed no urine or stool with no need for dialysis. Interviews with the researchers speak of strict observation and relate that the round-the-clock observation was ensured by multiple closed ca- uh, closed caption TV cameras. Mm-hmm. Closed circuit? Closed circuit TV. Closed circuit, yes. Closed captioning is like when they put the words on the screen so that mm-hmm. you can do the reading. Yeah. And the, yep. Uh, <laughs> but this was closed circuit. Closed TV, circuit. Which is different, right? Yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> CCTV. Yeah. Um, Security camera. Yeah. So, so basically they were watching him, right? I am uh-huh. Scott. Big brother. So Johnny was subjected to multiple medical tests. And the research team could not comment on his claim of having been able to survive in this way for decades. So they watched him for two weeks and they were like, look, he did it. He did it. Right. Breatharianism. It's a moment. We should all convert and save all the animals and resources. Right. Mm. I mean, but it's two. It's two weeks. Right. It's two weeks. Um, So the case attracted criticism, obviously. The president of the Indian Rationalist Association criticized the 2010 experiment specifically for allowing Johnny to move out of a certain closed circuit TV camera's field of view. And he was also allowed to meet devotees and he was allowed to leave the sealed test room to sunbathe. Um, His butthole? <laughs> un, that's, uh, that's unconfirmed <laughs> as to whether that was his like reception place. But yeah, so it was it was pointed out that the regular gargling and bathing activities um, that Pralajani was allowed during these two weeks weren't sufficiently monitored. And it's possible that he, you know, if you're gargling water, it's possible that you could swallow some of it. And it's possible that that could sustain you for two weeks. Why is he gargling water in the first place? I guess through, you know, well, some people who are proponents of dry fasting are like really aggressive about it and like they won't brush their teeth or take showers. That's what I'm saying. Because like, they're worried that they'll like absorb the water through their skin. Because it's such a bad thing. Yeah. But anyway, continue. So, yeah, there's a reason that we had the uh, National Eating Disorder Recovery Hotline at the beginning of this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are worried about taking a shower, breaking your fast because you absorb water, you should call them. Uh, no jokes about that. So, yeah, so they were basically pointing out that, like, all of these things could have provided opportunities for him to sneak a quick, like, snack, right? If he's meeting devotees, they could have brought him food. If he's stepping outside of the field of vision of the CCTV, you know, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But the biggest criticism is that both hospitals where both the 2003 and the 2010 tests took place in hospitals that were privately owned. Which left plenty of room for snarky dealings, right? Yeah, I can see that. Whatever the mystery, it will likely never be solved, though, as Prahlad Johnny actually died back in May of this year at age 90. And his cause of death was supposedly old age. Huh. And he was like 90, so. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But supposedly he's like has just never had food or water. 
since for 1940. all of these years, since yeah. 1940. Since 1940, mm. supposedly. Okay. And I mean, he is very thin. He is very thin and frail. Um, it is possible. So if you told me that somebody, I mean, just as, because it, it does align with my interests, right? Like the intermittent fasting thing and, and studying that lifestyle. And what you learn is that folks who have an abundance of fat on their bodies, <laughs> not yeah. even... Not even necessarily that you have to be that big, but like if you have extra fat stored on your body, then you're going to be able to fast longer than somebody. I mean, obviously, excluding all other medical issues and everybody's different and everything like that. But you would be able to fast longer, excluding all other factors than somebody with less fat on their body because you have less fuel stored up. Right. Yeah. So excluding all the other factors. But this guy was like really thin, really frail. And this is somebody who should not be fasting for an extended amount of time because there's no extra fuel, right? And when we run out of fat to feed off of, which for some of us could take longer than others, but when that does happen, the body starts to attack soft tissue, yeah, which is a big problem. But apparently he died of old age and that's that. 2020 stole even this from us. (laughs) So rest in peace, probably Johnny. Um, The next sort of figure that I wanted to look at is a man named Wiley Brooks. Oh, oh. What a name Wiley for Brooks. a cult episode. Wiley Brooks. Wiley Brooks. So Wiley is the founder of the Breatharian Institute of America. He was first introduced to the public in 1980 when he appeared on the TV show That's Incredible! Exclamation point. You know what? That's incredible. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Brooks uh, stopped teaching to quote, devote 100% of his time on problem solving as to why he needed to eat some type of food to keep his physical body alive and allow his light body to manifest completely, end quote. You know, we're talking about this and my stomach is like growling right Right? now. (laughs) My stomach just like like, "Mm." garbled a little bit and I'm like, I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I actually was over here thinking about like, damn, could I like get some Uber Eats damn, can while we take, in the like, middle of this ten, episode? Like I was minute. like, I was over here, I was like, grab my phone and I'm like, can I like Grubhub Door dash. something for a moment? <laughs> All this talk about like not eating is making me want to eat. See, this is why like we need a DoorDash sponsorship because we could like stop and plug them like right in the middle of this episode and it'd be great. It'd be great. Uh, oh my God. That right? would be amazing. Incredible. But instead, fuck y'all, you know, no free rides <laughs> for anybody. So. Um, just go to the kitchen, I guess. So, yeah. So Wiley is uh, he he's on this like journey to find a way to allow his light body to manifest. And he claims to have found four major deterrents which prevented him uh, from living without food. And those were people pollution, food pollution, air pollution and electro pollution. And I think technically electro pollution is this podcast like <laughs> hmm. Electro pollution. So we're going to. Sounds like a the name for like a great band. Sounds you know like the I mean? name of our first tour. Electro pollution. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm metal. into it. Electro pollution. Fucking badass. I'm Hell into yeah. it. Yeah. However, it seems like our bro Brooks was not telling the whole story. In 1983, he was reportedly observed leaving a Santa Cruz 7-Eleven. Uh. With a Slurpee. A hot dog. <laughs> And Twinkies. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love it. Get that 7-Eleven, that big gulp going on. There's a reason he's my favorite. <laughs> so he told Colors Magazine in 2003 that he periodically breaks his fasting with a cheeseburger and a cola, explaining that when he's surrounded by junk culture and junk food, consuming them adds balance. <laughs> Which is the ultimate Boom, flip it and reverse it. Like the ultimate. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's like balance, dude. Fuck Come yeah. on. Yeah. Like I occasionally go to the 7 Eleven. Yeah. We love a 7 and 11. 7 Eleven. 7 and 11. Seven. What is that? <laughs> I love a 7 and 11. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. No, maybe that's because we're not really 7 Eleven people. We're actually Sheets people over here. Or at least I'm I a am. Wawa person. That's true. You I'm a you Wawa like Wawa. Girl. I'm still a sheets. I'm a sheets girl. Wawa is like, I don't know. Wawa is my Wawa is the embodiment of my love affair with the state of Pennsylvania. We love a Pennsylvania man. We really do. Something about him. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's that's my new excuse for every McDonald's run that I go on is it it brings me balance. <laughs> Just centers me for a moment. Yeah. So our boy Wiley, uh, he later claimed that Diet Coke and McDonald's cheeseburgers have special 5D properties. <laughs> I love that. I, I I love that he has ordered a Diet Coke. <laughs> And a cheeseburger. And a cheeseburger. Fucking extra cheese. I love it. I love it. But I want to know more. Are you going to go into these 5D properties? So it's it's a little complicated. The idea of separate but interconnected 5D and 3D worlds is like a big part of his ideology. But it's also real complicated and simultaneously a bunch of bullshit. Uh, but he he basically encourages his followers to only eat special 5D foods as well as to meditate on a set of magical 5D worlds. So apparently uh, homeboy loved him some McDonald's. Uh-huh. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what, you know, you find what you love, make it into a way of life. Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. In, in a way, it's sort of the American dream. Pretty much. You go, Wiley. You go. So Wiley Brooks Institute has set uh, various prices for prospective clients wishing to learn how to live without food, ranging from a hundred thousand U.S. dollars with an initial deposit of ten thousand, all the way up to one billion dollars uh. to be paid via bank wire transfer with a preliminary deposit of a hundred thousand for a session called an immortality workshop. Uh, so they, they you can pay a billion dollars. Yeah, absolutely. And if it sounds like it's a little bit of a steep price to pay for eternal life, don't worry about it. Our boys got payment plans. Uh, uh. <laughs> Love that. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So, uh, huh. A billion dollars payment plan. Yeah. What does that payment plan look like? Not, I'm concerned. Not like, sure. <laughs> like, how much a month is that? What all is coming with this plan? Like, is it... Is it like a subscription service perks, here? Like, perks. am I getting a, am I getting like a box every mm-hmm. month? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what's the deal? Like, mm-hmm. are you always there? I feel like if I'm paying a billion dollars, then like, I better have you on speed dial for some like, you know, quick guidance here. Uh, Mr. Wiley, like mm-hmm. I need to know mm-hmm. who, and, and also who else is like, who else has joined that Patreon tier for them? Right. I just <laughs> like, feel like I just want to say, like, a great I mean, time to just take a break and say, if you want to check us out at patreon.com slash the haunted heart, I mean, you can. It's going to be a whole lot cheaper than a billion dollars. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, and in a way, you get eternal life because you get an invocation on the show. And, and, yeah, it, you're you will be on the show forever. Right. And for as little as a dollar. Right. What better way to live eternally than through. A shitty indie podcast. You know? True. Very true. It's the whole reason why I'm doing this. <laughs> you know, we're on a mission too. Yeah. We too are mission led <laughs> individuals. So anyway. So that's Wiley. Um Wiley's fun. He's he's pretty I mean, he he is contributing to breatharianism, which is like kind of, you know, it's not so good. Uh but He's a little more fun, a little more lighthearted. We're having some burgers. We're having some fucking Slurpees. Just We're sounds like he's Twinkies. just trying to find a way to make a buck. Right. Honestly, typical, typical con like, man. We love it. It just sounds like a, a, a cod man, right. but like, right. you know, endearing. Yes. And then we come to our third practitioner that we're going to explore in the context of breatharianism. Arguably, in recent memory, I guess, uh, one of the most recognizable leaders of the movement, so to say. And that is Jazz Muheen. So Jazz Muheen, born Ellen Grieve, was a prominent advocate of breatharianism in the 1990s. So breatharianism goes all the way back, I mean, realistically to like the 70s mm-hmm. um, is really where we start seeing it in modern culture. But of course, the folks who were kind of starting the movement in the 70s hearkened back to these ancient Hindu texts and they were like, actually, it's been around for tens of thousands of years and blah, blah, blah. But realistically, in the modern era, it comes from about the 70s, 70s, 80s. Uh, Jasmine Heen comes on the scene in the 1990s and she's this like really like, I guess pretty, I guess typically pretty. She's um, pretty. But well, she's she's small and she's blonde and she's tall and she's like, you know, fit. And so I guess she's pretty. And she kind of comes on the scene in the 1990s and becomes a face for the movement. 
She said, quote, I can go months and months without having anything at all other than a cup of tea. My body runs on a different kind of nourishment, end quote. Oh, so she, oh, so this is like the epitome of the phrase, like, I'm built different, yes, right? Like, yeah. she's like, I'm built different, honey. And like, all I need is a cup of tea and I'm good to go. I'm Gucci for like months at a time. Okay. Basically. Yes, this uh-huh. is her. This is her. When interviewers uh, who were kind of doing a documentary on her, though, found her house stocked with food, uh, Uh, Jasmine just claimed that it was for her husband and her daughter. Like, that's not my food. That's their food. Yeah. uh Okay, girl. All right. It's not my food. So in 1999, she volunteered to be monitored closely by the Australian television program 60 Minutes for one week without eating to demonstrate her methods. Jasmine Heen stated that she found it difficult on the third day of the test because the hotel room in which she was confined was located near a busy road, causing stress and pollution that prevented absorption of required nutrients for the air. Uh huh. So 60 Minutes called her bluff with a resounding, okay, sis, and moved her to a mountainside retreat. <laughs> We're going to put your ass up in the mountains. Okay, all right. No pollution here, huh? Uh huh. So, not surprisingly, Her condition continued to deteriorate independent of her environment. After Jasmine Hain had fasted for four days, Barris Wink, president of the Queensland branch of the Australian Medical Association, who was monitoring her daily, urged her to stop the test. According to Wink, Jasmine Hain's pupils were dilated, her speech was slow, and she was quite dehydrated, probably over 10%, getting up towards 11% dehydration. Towards the end of the test, uh, Wink said... Quote, her pulse is about double what it was when she started. The risks, if she goes any further, are kidney failure. 60 minutes would be culpable if they encouraged her to continue. She should stop now. End quote. So, of course, the test was stopped. Wink said, quote, unfortunately, there are a few people who might believe what she says, and I'm sure it's only a few, but I think it's quite irresponsible for somebody to be trying to encourage others to do something that is so detrimental to their health. End quote. Jasmine Heen, of course, who is this famous, you know, at this point, this famous figurehead for this movement. She's doing speeches all around the world. She's writing books. She's got like a fucking blog and all that stuff. She, of course, challenged the results of the program, saying, quote, look, 6,000 people have done this around the world without any problem, end quote. But. But you didn't. But you didn't. Right. Like. Yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. 6,000 other people have done it. Okay, but number one, that's just... But not you, sis. But 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 that's that's just you saying 6,000 people have. Like, where's the facts? Oh, yeah. Where's yeah. the receipts, yeah. right? Okay, so where here. are those 6,000 people? Left hmm? to death. <laughs> uh, and then you couldn't. And then, yeah. but like, you are the one who can go months and months without anything but a cup of tea. Mm. Sure Interesting. Did. Yeah. Okay. So Jasmine Heen was awarded the Bent Spoon Award by Australian Skeptics in 2000. Uh, Wait, is, what? Yeah. The Bent Spoon Award? Yes. This is an award that's presented to the perpetrator of the most preposterous piece of paranormal or pseudoscientific piffle. And I think it's meant to be alliterative. So that's a direct quote. The Bent love that. Spoon Award. I love, love it. Love that. Bless you, Australia. Um, she also won the 2000 Ig Nobel Prize for Literature for Living on Light, which is her book. Um <laughs> Don't buy it. She she stated that some people's DNA has actually expanded from two strands to 12 strands in order to absorb more hydrogen, which is a load of bullshit. I feel like that is bullshit. I mean, where's the science to back that up? Right. So when somebody offered her thirty thousand dollars to prove her claim with a blood test, Jasmine Heen said that she didn't understand the relevance as she was not referring to herself per se. Here we go again. We're not we're not, we're not talking about ourselves. Yeah. Right. I also couldn't perform this challenge, but six thousand other people could. Right. Right. All these yeah. other people can do these things, but she can't. We're yeah. talking about other people, not her, mm-hmm. even though she has placed herself in the center of all of this. Look, she's just trying to share the spotlight. Mm. What was the name of that book? Living with light. Living on light. Living on light. Yes. OK. All right. Good luck. Um, so as of, you know, obviously we're we're having a lot of fun, poking fun at Jasmine Heen and, and all of this, all of this other bollocks to borrow a word from the Brits. But all of this stuff 
as we see in lots of different cults um, and lots of like weird new age spiritualism, you know, it comes at a price because as Jasmine is, you know, failing this challenge and, you know, turning down a bet to prove that human beings can actually expand their DNA strands from two to 12 in order to live off more hydrogen and light, there are serious ramifications of putting this information out there. People are, you know, some people are gullible. They are looking for answers. They're looking for some sort of spiritualism to speak to them. And it's very dangerous to put these ideas out and hold them out as science when they're not. Mm -hmm. Um, So as of 2017, five different deaths have been directly linked to breatharianism as a result of Jasmaheen specifically's publications. Jasmaheen has denied any responsibility for any of these deaths. So we're gonna we're gonna get a little a little heavier now because of course, unfortunately, this is the serious part. So in 1999, 53 year old Melbourne resident Lonnie Marcia Roslyn Morris died while attempting the breatharian diet advocated by Jasmaheen. Reportedly, in the few days prior to her death, Morris began violently vomiting up a black, viscous fluid. Mm. Jim Vadim Peznek, 63, and his wife Eugenia, 60, went to prison for six years and two years, respectively, on charges of manslaughter for their involvement in the death of Morris. Apparently, Morris was staying with them, and um, Jim and Eugenia were like these, these big breatharians, and they had gotten Lonnie into the movement and she was attempting to quote unquote transition into living on light. And as she began, she, she wasn't doing well, obviously. And then she began kind of like vomiting. They told her that, you know, this is all part of the transition. You just have to kind of work through it. These are spirits leaving your body is what they actually told her. And then she died. Referring to this case in particular, Jasmine Heen commented that Morris's practice of breatharianism perhaps was quote, not coming from a place of integrity and did not have the right motivation. See, that's some fucking bullshit right there. I hate that shit because it's like you are just kind of like removing yourself from the situation when in fact you have actively been a driving force of right. that situation. Right. Maybe not the sole force, but you have been a major but factor. But you were fucking there. You were there and you absolutely take no responsibility. I don't like this bitch. She Your just face doesn't is on the seem, coffee table. I don't I don't like this bitch because she just seems to like take no responsibility mm-hmm. for anything mm-hmm. as she has proven in you know what in the things that we've talked about in, in regards to her. And I just I don't like her. I don't like this bitch. And it's irritating to me when people there are people that have suffered because of this and because of these teachings. And they have died from it. And you just absolutely Short off responsibility. Yeah. And then you just you put the blame on them. Yeah. You put yeah, the blame yeah. on them. Yeah. You put the blame on them and you just say, oh, well, they just they weren't working hard enough. Mm-hmm. Their, their intentions weren't true. No, bitch. You just are fucking faulty. Faulty. Yeah. Yes. So Jasmine actually offered a similar defense in response to the 1999 death of Verity Lynn, who died of hypothermia and dehydration with lack of nutrition while practicing breatharianism in Scotland. Uh, Verity Lynn's diary mentioned Jasmine's teachings specifically. Her body was found in a tent. Um, 2012, a Swiss woman died of starvation after attempting to survive purely on light, as taught in one of Jasmine's books. In 2017, a Dutch woman living in a household of four practitioners of breatharianism inspired by Jasmaheen died under mysterious circumstances. The three remaining members of the household are suspected of withholding the malnourished woman adequate medical care. In late 2017, 22-year-old German citizen Finn Bogemiel died on the Caribbean island of Dominica, reportedly of fasting. According to witnesses, he was not eating or drinking for several days ahead of his death, and he told friends and family members of his plans to live only off of sunlight. In response to all of these deaths, Jasmine has written that, quote, if you haven't found the light that will nourish you, you may have the intention to become a breatharian, but in fact, you may be putting yourself through food deprivation. There is one known case where a person died while trying to become a breatharian. 
despite the fact that we have not one, but five cases. Okay. She's a right cunt, that one. (laughs) I mean, uh, pretty much, if you ask me. I'm not uh, not a fan of this woman. Yeah. Not at all. She's kind of like the ultimate, like, malicious gym instructor. You know what I mean? And she kind of looks like that, too. Like, she's really tan, and she has, like, the wispy blonde hair with, like, the power poof bangs. And she's, like, seems like she's always really active. Yeah. (laughs) I think she's cut all her hair off now, right? Yeah, like from what I can see, cut. she's got like a she's got like a pixie cut going on. Yeah, I imagine that maybe like living off light isn't so good for the hair follicles, sis. I mean, I wouldn't think so. It's just so like it's just so frustrating. Yeah. Because so many people out there, you know, already have, you know, triggers and different things when it comes to food and they have issues that they're working with and I mean, I get I get the idea of there being some sort of, you know, like we mentioned earlier with the spirituality behind fasting. Mm -hmm. Right. And the intentions behind it. But even then, a lot of fasting isn't just you have no food at all. You know what I mean? It's like there are certain rules, you know, where you have food, you know, before the sunrise and, you know, you can't have during the day. And it's there's different rules. It's not just about not having food the intention at all. in starting a fast is not to never eat again i think and i think that's where balance really comes into play you know you don't and if you are you know somebody who's on a fasting program or has developed a fasting regimen um that's great if it's working for you but you know there needs to be that concept of balance and if you're in a fast you know as somebody who does some extended fasting if there's ever a moment where i'm in a fast and i start having like the thought process starts becoming don't eat, don't eat. You better not eat. You can't eat. You can't do this. Then, then I need to break the fast. You right. know, that's what that means. Right. So you're not like, you don't go into fasting with the mindset of like, Oh, can't eat, can't eat, can't eat, can't eat. And I think if you, if you're able to sort of go about it in the right way, it does kind of give you a little bit of liberation for food from food, particularly if you have a lot of issues with your relationship with food, mm-hmm. but you have to, bring a, a mindset of balance into it and you can't ignore science either. Yeah, most definitely can't ignore science. I mean, for me and you know that I have dabbled in a little bit of fasting before um, prior to quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was pretty much on a, uh, I was on a, a regular schedule and for me it was, um, I found that my relationship with food because it, I was able to see it a bit clearer because before you know, if I was bored, eat, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Grab something, mm-hmm. whatever. So it it allowed me to just be focused on more of the intention behind consuming food. And mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of respect for what and when you're eating. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it it allowed me to be like, OK, this is intentional that I am sitting here you know, to have this meal. It's not right. something that I am, I'm not consuming because I'm bored or I'm, you know, I'm not consuming because whatever other reasons, it just became more intentional for me. And it allowed me to, you know, get on a schedule and I've been trying to like get back into it post quarantine, but it's not something where it's like, I, I, I feel like that, like, I just can't eat at all. Yeah. It shouldn't be a mindset of deprivation. It should be a mindset of liberation and with because that it can be addicted comes, yeah, food yeah. can be addiction you know can be an addiction right right and so i think that there is merit to the fact that going about fasting the right way can help with a lot of impulse control and you know certain things like that totally totally i think going into it with the right mindset bringing that mindset of balance bringing that mindset of spiritualism but also involving science because there is a lot of science around fasting and bringing the two together if it works for you great i just think a, a lot of this breatharian movement is not about balance it's about it's it's kind of like pushback and we've seen a lot of this in recent years this pushback against science this like anti-science sentiment and I know we talk a lot about non-scientific topics here, but we're both both of us have a great uh, degree of respect for science. And, you know, it's Absolutely. neither one of us are scientists, but, you know, we respect people who have that skill set. And even though we do believe in the paranormal, we do believe in, you know, a lot of things that are outside of science's scope. 
it doesn't mean that you can't hold both of those things, right? It's like the Platonic sort of, yes. um, it's it's Plato's theory of and, right? Holding two ideas that may seem to conflict at the same time. We believe in the paranormal and we also believe in science. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to do both. I mean, I think science is always changing. You're learning new things every day as we progress as a society. And I think that a lot of the times there are things that I think that those two realms are intertwined more than we mm-hmm. probably all more than we probably realize now. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's, you know, it's important to know that while we definitely are uh you know, proponents of science, I think that it's also important to note that that science is, you know, it changes. We learn new things every day. And so it's important to just kind of keep that in mind as we're trying to think about paranormal and and this and, you know, fucking getting sunlight from your fucking butthole and, and then all this other shit that, you know, it, where we stand in our knowledge now of how things are isn't necessarily what they will be tomorrow or 10 years from now. So you are you saying know. that one day I might be able to live off of sunlight, I'm like gonna, sunning my asshole? I'm going to say that what you're no. Saying? Is there hope I'm, for me I'm, yet? I'm going to say no. <laughs> um, because we recognize that our bodies need food and water and sustenance to live. So yeah. that's all I'm saying. It's where we are now. Who knows? Uh, who knows where we may go in the future, but that's it. To that's, <laughs> that's, that's breatharianism for you. So that's what we've got today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, if it's something that you, uh, if food is something that you struggle with, there are resources for that. Go seek them out. Yes, for sure. We want everybody to be safe, happy and healthy. And otherwise, I mean, do you want to do you want to let the people know where they can find us? Oh, are you putting that on me? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, it's Ooh, you. this it's, is new. It's my episode, so I'm giving it. I'm giving you. Usually, the, that's not the, the case. Style. But yes, if you would, uh, if you like listening to the show, um, definitely leave us a like and a review uh, on your podcast app. We definitely um, appreciate those. You can find us on Facebook at the Haunted. Heart. We have a Facebook group there. Actually, if you, I think if you search for the Haunted Heart or the Haunted Heart podcast on Facebook, you'll find us. Whatever, just one of those. Just find us. One of those. Haunted Heart, Haunted Heart podcast. Whatever. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at the Haunted Heart podcast and Twitter at the Haunted Heart. And is that it? We're also on Patreon. Give yeah, us money. Well, I was going to do that, but <laughs> then I realized that we had already discussed that. So I f- was going to say that. If you have any topics that you'd like for us to discuss, you can send us an email at the Haunted Heart Podcast at gmail.com. We always love uh, getting emails from you guys and comments and all of that. So definitely shoot that over to us. We'd love to read it. We'd love to see it. And you never know if you send us a suggestion, it might be the next episode that you hear. It just might be, huh? And uh, also the biggest thing that you can do to help the show, it's totally free. It is sharing the show out to your friends, family, colleagues, whoever, whoever yeah. you want, mm-hmm. undead, companions, whoever. Um, so if you like the show, share it with your friends, help us grow the family. We're always trying to find new souls for harvesting. Yes. And I think that's it. That is, that is it? it. That is Did we it. Do it. So we're going to go out here and we're going to uh, get some food. We're not going to uh, expose our buttholes to the sun. Speak for yourself. <laughs> All right, guys. So until next time, you know what you got to do. Put that sunscreen on your asshole and stay, stay soon. soon.